Hi, I'm Maggie Woodley and welcome back to another one of our Crafty Hangouts. Today we're looking at fairy tales. Um, so my kids at the moment are really into fairy tales. Uh, my older one who's six now um, is doing lots of fairy tales at school and my little one obviously just loves fairy tales anyway. So we thought it'd be fun to explore different crafts either to do with the kids or for the kids or as adults or things that you might give to them as a gift inspired by fairy tales. Um, as usual I'm going to go first quickly and then pass on to my fellow bloggers and their ideas um, and hopefully we've got a nice varied bunch of things from the little ones up right up to adults and who you know whatever inspires you to get crafty. First up, don't know if you know who this is, this is the big bad wolf and this one is going to huff and puff the house down. So we made a, a loo roll wolf, oh we can see we had some fixing to do at the back, made some little paper houses, kind of origami, the very simple shape and we made some little piggies, so the piggies are our favourite. So all loo rolls, basically painted um, and then we snipped some shapes to make their, ear, their, their ears and their legs stuck on some felt for, for bodies with the wolf to make it more wolf-like. Um, you can see on the side I cut out the, 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 the snout. Um, I tried something else first and he looked a bit like a rabbit but after some consultation of my fellow bloggers we came up with something a bit more wolfy and scary. So these are our little wolves. The kids love these. It's interesting that my six-year-old loves to retell the story exactly like they're talking about it at school and my little one kind of makes up her own story. Having said that, the six-year-old also has created the three snakes and the big, the big bad tiger. So I thought that was quite fun. So he's kind of done a big variation. And we also made loo rolls for that, he's and Tad, but they're at school at the moment because he's showing them to his teacher. Another little craft that we, I made ages ago for the children, um, and that's also in my book, Red Ted Art, are these little peanut finger puppets. And these are the seven dwarfs. And here is a slightly broken, because we've stood on her by accident, um, Snow White. So it's it's peanut peanuts, um, you know, just the top cut off and the nuts got out and then we painted them and then just for a bit of extra fun we made a little house for them to live in. And this is another little fun story, um, you know, you can go and act the, 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 the fairy tale. And then finally, before I move on to my fellow bloggers, I wanted to show you something that Pipsqueak, she's four did and she came up with this all by herself. I was ignoring her one day, she was rummaging through the craft box and bit by bit, and it didn't start off quite like this, but this is what they ended up as, she made her own little court people. Now this one with the long, long hair is Rapunzel on her big tower. So we have Rapunzel and you can see she's done all the drawing, all the eyelashes, some of her fair, um, princes have got lipstick on. Um, and then she made Rapunzel and where's the, here's the, the prince to rescue her and here's the witch with the crazy witch hair to stop them. She also went on to make little red riding hood out of a little cork. Here's the granny to go with it and there's a wolf but I, I can't find him because we've been playing with them all week and the wolf is basically all black with some googly eyes and what I like about these, they're very innocent, you know, they don't have to be perfect for the kids to actually really love them and engage with them. Um, you know, she just really enjoyed making them. Here is Snow White, can you see the black, black hair? Can you see the pink lipstick? And this is what started it off actually, one of the dwarves with a big nose and there's another dwarf, She made. they gave them all the same outfit and the same big noses. And then finally we have a little Cinderella and she modelled this Cinderella on the Disney Cinderella and she looked at the Disney Cinderella book and went, Mummy, Mummy, we need yellow wool, we need a little blue headband, we need blue dress. So, you know, and I just thought it was very sweet that, you know, when you're crafting with kids, it's not about perfection, it's about what captures their imagination. And they've had so much play and really lots of fun and it's so sweet to hear the stories and then all the characters interacting with each other as well. Anyway, I'm going to pass over now to, um, to, um, to Ali and she's going to share us some of her crafts. Thank you, Ali. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I've got um, three things to show you today. I'm not quite sure what all to do it in, but let me start. Everybody knows Jack and the Beanstalk? Well, <laughs> it's enormous. So this is, I might have to move it back. Can you see? <laughs> there you go. This is um, Jack and the Beanstalk. This is a, an old wooden shelf here. And it's actually a reward chart because um, on Thursday last week, Thursday last week, my son um, got into a bit of pickle at school. So we said uh, we'll do a thumbs up from the teacher, and each thumbs up, he gets a leaf. So we're 
that's what we're doing. Um, you can see what I've done here. It's, it's, I've taken the leaf shape and I've smudged paint around it to kind of make a template for the leaves. And then up here, we've used um, a CD wallet to keep the leaves in. And that's it. That's Jack and the Beanstalk. So that's that one. Um, we've got something that Anthony and I both were in debate whether, whether or not this is actually a fairy tale. But we've got a teacup for our Mad Hatter's tea party. It's actually got a candle in it. So um, from a charity shop. Five of them and gave them words to give. So it was heartbreaking actually to separate them, so I might get them back eventually. Anyway, so that's that. Um, and then the other one we did was um, a mirror, mirror on the wall. So I'll show the show. Let me show you the mirror first. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit fiddly. There you go. Can you see that? We've made these. Deeper. Well, I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then we've decorated the mirror with a glue gun. So this is um, myself and my 11-year-old did this one. So it's a, a good craft to be with an older child. And he really enjoyed that and he's looking forward to have that in his bedroom. So basically, those swirls are made from rolling newspaper sticks, which are really tactile. And then you swirl them together. And twist them around, and here's something that Elspeth playing with me. We stick them together with a glue gun. I love the glue gun. Um, that's mine. Okay, princess thing going on. <laughs> Anthea, it's more your bag. I'll pass over to you. Oh, thanks. I love that. Fantastic tiara, that would be. <laughs> really. um, right, what shall I start with? Okay, I'll start with collage. I, this, this was done. Um, Oh gosh, about four years ago by my eldest. I'm big into collage. I've got a, another one that's a kind of diorama behind me. And this is a mermaid, so based on the Little Mermaid story. But it's using our kind of porthole um, paper plate concept, which is very easy for kids. Now, I don't know if you can see, it's slightly sparkly. I can see. Um, and what I did is I mixed silver glitter in with um, blue paint. Well, actually, the girls did that, didn't. and it's great fun because they can mix it up. And then we just kind of like had a look at all the bits that we could use to, to make a kind of underwater mermaid um, picture. So we got tissue paper that we had coming down for some of the plants. We scrunched up a brown bit for a rock. We got shells that we bought, shells that we picked up off the beach, and uh, we made the mermaid. And uh, and my eldest did this. And we got. Well, I don't know if you can see here. This is one of those um, skeleton leaf. And that you can use You're using paper crafting quite a lot. And then she's gone over the skeleton leaf with a little bit of glitter glue, which dries nice and flat. We've got a pom pom head. Um, and these are brilliant. I mean, like I say, this is about four years old, and it's great. You can use any odds and bits that you've got around the house to kind of get them thinking about what they could do to make something look similar um, to, to, to an underwater scene. Um, now, paper mache, big on my paper mache. So I've been playing. I'll show you. This is, this is the um, slightly tenuous link, a bit like Ali. This is my. Mad Hatter's tea party, okay, but it could be a princess tea party, except this is a bit mad, okay, there we go, hang on, so this is my mad teacup and saucer, it's all spiky, if you wanted to, this is how you make, you use basically a, um, a saucer and a cup, and you mould around it, now I always, even if I'm doing a nice neat one, I always kind of take the, the newspaper over the edge, and then I'll cut it neatly just to, um, and oh, sorry, I'm waffling a bit here. <laughs> you cut this bit off and then you just fold another bit of tissue pa um, newspaper over the top to seal it. But if you want to make a mad one like this, just leave it spiky, which is great for um, all kinds of like evil witches and things. And then the other little paper mache I've done is I'm making a pair of elf boots. And this is made from, I haven't covered this one completely. Can you see that little bit of orange? That's made from an egg carton. So this is the bit of the egg carton that the egg would sit in. And you have a kind of point that comes up like this. You cut it in half. You pull half of it down. And that's the kind of bottom of the, the shoe. And then you put a little cone over the top. And only need, it's probably about one and a half layers. It's a bit more layer. One, one layer of newspaper around here. A couple more bits around here because this is where it's joined, and you just leave it to dry and paint it, and they look fantastic. It would be great actually for um, St. Patrick's Day as well. Now I'm going to pass over to Kelly. Thanks, Anthea. Those shoes would be great. My girls, um, they really like a story called The Elves and the Shoemaker, 
which I think is a classic fairy tale. They'd be perfect for that. Absolutely brilliant. Um, the subject of girls. Mine are all really girly crafts today, funnily enough. Um, the first up, I've got these. It's kind of quite hard to see in this light. You zoom in closer. There you go. Um, Rapunzel bookmarks. And they're fairly simple. Um, we, uh, Cecily's just started reading quite a lot, actually. And, um, and so the bigger the books get, the more likely she is to have to leave them, take a break, go and do something else, which means we need a page marker. My current favorite book, I'll have to share this with you because it's kind of slightly relevant, is Royal Wedding, Charles and Diana. That's her favorite book of the moment. Um, the girls helped with these, actually. So all it is is you cut the castle shape out of card corresponding piece of felt on the top. They actually, it's very hard to see in these pictures, but they did decorate the princess faces. Um, and I added the plaits, and we've added a bit of decoration. They're kind of quite simple to do, and obviously the plaits are very good because they're loose. You can put this on the page behind, and the plait goes over the page that you're actually marking, and it, it actually helps anchor the bookmark in place. But these are going up on the blog tomorrow, I think, so they'll be available for you to look at those. Um, the second craft, entirely girl driven. They did this all themselves um, and directed me accordingly. So we have puppet made from cardboard boxes. You can see it says, oh, it's not there, interchangeable scenery as made by my six year old, well, almost six year old. And teeny weeny, teeny tiny. This apparently is. Goldilocks and the bears. I can only find one bear currently. But anyway, totally done by the girls themselves. They drew the artwork. They stuck it onto lollipop sticks. They told me what to do with the boxes. And actually, I did cut a slit in the bottom of the box so you can sort of do that thing. Very exciting. So there we go. So that's one thing. Um, and the last thing, which probably be quite challenging to see, actually, because it's transparent. Uh, this is um, Cinderella's glass slipper. Um, I've had to mess around quite a bit with it. It's sort of a work in progress, I think, really. But this is actually, um, I started making them from milk bottles, um, milk plastic milk cartons. They're slightly opaque, so you don't see the join so much, but they are harder to I actually made. Um, I laminated, well, it's basically, it, it's a laminated paper without the paper in the middle of it. So just to run the laminator sheet through the laminator so you've got um, a sheet of acetate double thickness. And then I use a template that I found on um, the Skip to My Lou blog, which again is probably quite hard to see in this light because it's terrible light today. Um, but this is going up on the blog anyway. Um, I use that as a guideline for kind of cutting it all out. But it is it's totally transparent, it obviously, but it'd be great party favor or decoration or, you know, storytelling prop, that sort of thing. I was thinking you could put sweets on the inside, you know, whether it's a, a girl's party or even a wedding, if you were that way inclined. You could make, oh, I can't imagine making a hundred of them, but you could, um, and stuff them with sweets and things. So anyway, those are my three, and I am going to pass, last but not least, to Liz. Hello. Thank you. My daughter would love Love that glass slipper, I think. But she'd probably try and put it on, I imagine. She'd want a pair of them. Um, so my first craft, I'm going to show you some first because it's a bit big. I don't know how I'm going to show you this. This is our little red ride cape that we made, um, I say we made, last year for World Book Day. And she wore that into school. And she loves it, actually. She still wears it. It's in her dressing up box. Um, and if we go to the woods, she always wants to put her little red riding hood cape on. So this is on my blog already. It's quite simple to make. I'm not the world's best seamstress, um, so it's pretty straightforward. It's essentially just one big rectangle of um, red fabric. We use this really nice um, fur, so it's actually quite warm. She can wear it as a coat. Um, and I lined mine, but you don't need to. So you just basically kind of put it over the child's head and sh sort of shape it and pin it in place. Because um, the hood's all part of the same the same piece, it's not a separate piece of fabric. Um, so you shape it around the head, and then you literally get rid of my coat hanger. Um, or undo it. You literally just sew a ribbon on the inside to catch all the gathers, and then that becomes the tie around things. So really quite straightforward, and um, that gets a lot of use. That one. 
Um, the next one she's been playing with this morning, it was quite minimalistic, but now um, it's rather jeweled. This is our little crown, um, which is made actually from this lace. So if you get the kind of crochet style cotton lace rather than the, you know, the flimsy synthetic stuff, um, it holds its shape really well. So she's helped me do this. It's really simple. You just basically lay out your lace, cover it in PVA glue, and leave it to dry, and then it becomes a little bit sort of rigid. Um, and then we painted it gold. She's put her little stick on jewels on. This I think is to go with one of her Disney. Um, princess costumes that she's got. So that's that one. And then lastly, going back to um, Ali's Jack and the Beanstalk, we've been making some magic beans. To say making, this is probably the world's easiest craft in the world. Um, I saw it over on um, Lulix's blog and she really she did it for Father's Day. And she just took some little beans, I don't know if you can see this, and she did it for Father's Day and wrote sweet messages on. I've just written, um, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, Magic Beans, um, and then made a little envelope out of a kind of a vintage illustration. So just use a, an ordinary envelope, a small one as a template, cut out your envelope, and then you've got your Magic Beans. So they're quite sweet for like a party favour or something to give to kids, then obviously they can grow their own Magic Beanstalk. But yeah, I'm going to hand you back to Maggie now. Oh, <coughs> lovely. I love all the varied ideas. And um, if Pipsqueak sees that little Red Riding Hood cape, I know that we'll have to make one. Anyway, um, I hope you've been inspired by our fairy tale crafts. I think they're very lovely and very magical, and it's a really nice thing to explore with children. Um, and hopefully, see you all again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.